Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online regulation D VGC ladder in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and provide live commentary as I go. In this video, I'm going to be trying out a super fun team built by 2017 world champion Ryoto Otsubo, who is one of my all-time favorite team builders. Ryota recently got to rank number 5 on the in-game ladder with this exact team, and I wanted to feature it because it has a couple of really strong components to it. For example, it's got Choice Specs Chiyu paired with Sunny Day Tornadus, it's also got a defensive Bramble Gas with Rocky Helmet and Strength Sap, and you also have fun sets like Icy Wind plus Speed Booster Energy Fluttermane and Dragon Dance Citrus Berry Gyarados. As always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team, but if you want to just skip to the battles, check out the timestamps down in the description below. And thank you so much, as always, for joining me. If you enjoy, would really appreciate it if you consider leaving a like in the video or subscribing to the channel. It really helps out a ton. Anyway, let's just dive into things. Breaking down the team now, as always, Rental, Pace, and Team Creator are linked down in the description below. And like I mentioned, this team was created by 2017 World Champion Ryota Otsubo. Ryota actually streamed his run to number 5 on the ladder on YouTube, so I'll link the VOD down in the description below, as well as his YouTube channel if you want to see the true expert pilot this team. And question of the day, with us using Bramble Gas, I want to know what's one move you wish this Pokemon got down in the comment section below. Now, we have to start off this team by talking about Bramble Gas. I'd actually already featured a Bramble Gas team on the channel before in this format, and I'll link that video down in the description below, but this Bramble Gas is actually really different. When I had previously used Bramble Gas, it was a set with basically max attack and max speed, and this is fully defensive, as you can see, max HP, max defense. Bramble Gas's base HP is fairly low, so it is really important to try to cover for it defensively, and the general idea behind this set is that it walls a lot of common Pokemon and sets in the format. For example, Wind Rider is just an incredible ability, giving you immunity to moves like Tornadus, Thunderous' signature attacks, it gives you immunity to Heat Wave, for example, as well, and of course it gives you an attack boost when Tailwind is set up. So, the idea is that Bramble Gas can still deal pretty decent damage thanks to its base 115 attack and Power Whip just being a really strong move, even if you have no attack investment. But what's really nice about Bramble Gas is that this can give a lot of physical attackers a ton of trouble. For example, against Water Urshifu, it takes so much damage from Surging Strikes thanks to Rocky Helmet, whereas Bramble Gas really doesn't take too much damage in return, which is awesome. Because of the amount of defense that you have, this Bramble Gas can also be a really nice endgame mon where you use Strength Sap to continuously decrease your opponent's attack and they just don't have the ability to switch out once you've gotten them down to their final two Pokemon. The main thing to note about this Bramble Gas is that it's not going to be a carry for your team, right? It's just not going to deal that much damage, and you should not expect it to get knockout after knockout, but what you should expect is for it to stay on the field for a long time and just be a huge nuisance to your opponent's team while also walling a fair amount of common meta Pokemon. So I think that's what makes it really fun, and there are a lot of different ways to use this Pokemon, but I think this set just makes so much sense given that you have a lot of offense with the rest of the team. So, given that Bramble Gas isn't dealing the damage, you might be wondering where the damage actually comes from, and the first Pokemon I would point to on this team is uh, Chi Yu. This is a Choice Specs Chi Yu set, and as you can see, it's just max speed, max special attack, and the idea is to hit as hard as possible. Now, Chi Yu synergizes really nicely with two Pokemon in particular on this team. The first is Tornadus. With Tornadus, you can set up Tailwind for Chi Yu, enabling it to just outspeed practically everything, and Tornadus can also set up Sunny Day for Chi Yu. Sunny Day plus Heat Wave slash Overheat is no joke. It can get so many knockouts in this format, especially thanks to the Choice Specs and Beads of Room boosts, and you are able to snowball against teams that are not equipped to deal with this combo very, very quickly. Tornadus' moveset is fairly self-explanatory here. You want Sunny Day and Tailwind, you've got Bleak Wind Storm, and then Protect just so that you can bypass those pesky fakeouts, for example, on turn 1, and to just get around damage. Mentor exists on this set. This is particularly good in best of one closed team sheet when you don't know how fast, for example, your opponent's Tornadus is. You don't know if they have Taunt. I mean, Taunt in general is just an annoying move, and Tornadus uh, Speed Ties, or Tornadus Speed Wars, I should say, are kind of annoying to deal with. And this Tornadus is actually pretty speedy, but it's not max speed, so you just really don't want to, for example, go up against a max be Tornadus get taunted and then not be able to use your support moves because it's so essential to click Sunny Day and Tailwind with this team. But general idea is to pair Tornadus with Chiyu uh, or Bramble Gas, for example, right? Those are really nice combos. And Ghost Terra still exists here to give you immunity into either Fake Out, for example, or Extreme Speed from Dragonite. 
Flutter main here is also a really nice combo with Shiyu, and the idea is that this is plus speed booster Flutter. As you can see, you don't actually have that much speed investment, but the idea is that with the booster energy, you're outspeeding practically everything in the format, other than, I think, timid Regieleki with max speed. And so the general idea is that with Flutter main and Shiyu, you can go with Flutter Chiyu and just surprise your opponent with Icy Wind, drop their speeds, and then go for Choice Specs Heat Waves or Overheats, for example. So it just gives you another means of speed control and means that you don't have to rely solely on Tornadus. The upside of Flutter is, of course, it is immune to fake out so you can comfortably lead flutter main and go for those icy wins immediately without using your terra uh one thing to note here is that flutter doesn't have much hp investment but has a ton of defensive investment it's max defense so uh, often you're going to be surviving physical attacks with a little bit more ease than your opponents might generally anticipate to round things out you've got dragon dance gyarados this is just a set that can hit for really hard and in particular is really good against heatran Grass Terra Heatran is one of the most common sets in this format right now, and one of the main reasons to use it is because normally Grass obviously uh, becomes weak to fire, or is weak to fire, but Heatran's ability still covers for that weakness, so against a Grass Terra Heatran, there are very few ways to hit it for super effective damage. You can use Flying or Bug, for example. Bug is incredibly rare and also just doesn't have a great matchup into Fire, so Flying is really the only solution. And the idea is that this Gyarados in particular can beat Heatran before it Terras and after it Terras into Flying as well. And most people are using, uh, or sorry, Terras into Grass, and most people are using Grass Terra Heatran. So pretty straightforward. The main thing to note here is that you've got Citrus Berry, so you can sustain for a little bit longer because you don't have any bulk, so Gyarados can go down fairly quickly. But with this team, for example, you can lead Iron Hands and Gyarados and just pressure with like Fake Out in a Dragon Dance immediately and then start sweeping with Gyarados afterwards. The final Pokemon is Iron Hands, and this is just a bulky handset with an Assault Vest that can stay on the field for a really long time. Pretty self-explanatory, nothing too wild to say about this Pokemon. We've seen Assault Vest Iron Hands a lot throughout the last couple formats in Scarlet and Violet, and the main point is to just be able to provide Fake Out pressure while dealing damage. The main thing to note is that it is not speedy. Uh, the set that Ryota had actually has like a 6-speed IV, um, and that can help a little bit against like Trick Room teams, for example, so it gives you a little bit more coverage there. Uh, obviously, the rest of the team is fairly speedy with max speed investment or near max speed investment on like you know four of the six pokemon uh, and then bramble gas here obviously is going to be still decently speedy because it's just base 90 so yeah in terms of combos like i mentioned i generally look for a couple things um you know do i want to wall my opponent immediately with bramble gas i could just lead horn in bramble gas but of course you're not going to deal that much damage with this combo so if you're leading it you need to have good reason for it maybe your opponent has a lot of pokemon or just weak to grass for example uh, i think in terms of pure offense uh chiyu plus tornadus chiyu plus flutter those are two of your best leads i think iron hands plus gyarados is one of your best leads if you want to try to set up with gyarados and your opponent doesn't have too many like electric type attacks or uh, rock type attacks which will threaten this for super effective before and after Terra, so those are things to watch out for. Um, and you can go for things like Hands, Chiyu, Hands, Flutter Main as well. So, yeah. That's it for a quick breakdown. Now let's highlight some weaknesses. So, in terms of weaknesses, I think the first thing to know is, like, if you don't bring, say, the right combination of four Pokemon, a good defensive typing or Terra can really wall you. So, what I mean is, for example, Chiyu really loves using the strong fire type attacks, right? But if you are up against a Pokemon that resists fire, such as Heatran, for example, or Hisuian Arcanine, that can be really scary. So I've had games where maybe I end up going with Tornadus, Flutter, Chiyu, and Bramble Gas, and then a Fire Terra just really causes a lot of problems, right? Uh, because the reality is that like Bramble Gas isn't going to do much damage, Tornadus isn't going to do much damage, and this Flutter Main isn't exactly the most offensive either, right? So it's like a lot of the damage with this team is going to come from Chiyu and Gyarados if it's able to set up. Hands can deal decent damage, especially because of its insanely high base attack stat, as well as max attack investment. So this is pretty good as well, but it's generally going to be moving after your opponent, whereas Chiyu and Gyarados are the one's kind of bursting your opponent down before they get a chance to move. So I think, yeah, Pokemon that resist fire or are immune to fire are a good starting point because I think Chiyu is one of the focal points for this team. So that's one thing to know. I think with this team as well, Bramble Gas can be an incredible defensive option, but you can make it look completely useless if you kind of just target around it, right? The main thing to note about this Bramble Gas is that it doesn't really deal that much damage unless it's getting super effective hits off, right? Even if it gets an attack boost or two, like at the end of the day, Shadow Sneak is just not a strong move, and you don't have Phantom Force on this set. Uh, and Power Whip, for example, can be really good into Pokemon that are weak to it or maybe don't have great defensive stats, but otherwise, sometimes you'd like just keep clicking Power Whip and you're not really getting that much mileage. A fair amount of Pokemon 
Pokemon that are common in the format do wall this combo, uh, combo as well. So I've had games where I bring Bramble Gas because they mainly have physical attackers on their team, but then they like end up leading, you know, with the two special attackers, and then Bramble Gas is just in a really awkward position. So you have to be really intentional about when to bring this into matchups because it can look amazing or it can look completely useless. And when the times when it is looking like it's completely useless, it really hinders you because it means you're giving up something that's going to offer more offense with the rest of the team. I think for Tornad Tornadus, naturally, um, I've had games where my opponent just leads something like can threaten a one-hit knockout onto it, and then I'm not able to get both Tailwind and Sunny Day off, and that can be kind of tough, right? Because it's like maybe it's really nice to get both up simultaneously for Chiyu in particular, so you can blow up things, but if you're only getting one of the two, uh, that limits either your firepower or you just being able to outspeed everything in the format. So those are a couple of things that I have noted um, but like I think the main thing to call out is that yeah so much of your damage is coming from Chiyu, Gyarados, and Iron Hand so being able to mitigate that and if you from the player perspective are not bringing the right four uh, that can honestly really set you back just because of lack of damage in the late game so yeah anyway that's it for a breakdown let's get into these games okay Reggie Jago, Tornadus, Golden Go, Urshifu, Rillaboom, Mimikyu I think Bramble Gas is really interesting here, but the main thing I'm worried about is like the Reggie Drago. So against Drago, Flutter is really essential, but obviously they can go with something like Tornadus plus Golden Go, to which we could respond with Tornadus plus Chiyu. I think I like Torn Chiyu as a lead, honestly. And then I'm thinking Flutter Bramble Gas. The truth is Gyarados is also good here. I mean, everything's decent in this matchup. Hmm. Bramble Guess is really nice until the bottom three Pokemon and walls any bleak wind storms from their Tornadus is the thing. How do they beat Torn Chiyu Lee? Like, what are the leads we don't want to see with this? Probably them going with Reggie Drago. Rillaboom could also pressure with Fake Out because we can't protect. Like, Gyarados is interesting. I, I just, like, am afraid it takes too much time for it to get going. And what I mean by that is with Gyarados, like, I would want to Dragon Dance with it, but if I Dragon Dance, then that means they get a free attack off. It, it honestly, it's also a question of what Urshifu type it is, because if it were Dark Urshifu, it's much better in a Gyarados, but if it's Water Urshifu, I think I am way more incentivized to bring it. Uh, my other problem with Gyarados is that it's just not very good into Reggie Drago unless I Terra, right? So I don't like being walled by Drago. Golden Go and Urshifu. Okay, this works. Um... Scooby Scarf, I think... Turn one, it makes sense for you to defensively Terra Golden Go if you have have a defensive Terra. I could defensively Terra Chiyu though into water, which is pretty valuable. I'm also thinking about switching to Bramble Gast. Right? Because like a Surging Strikes or a close combat on that slot certainly makes sense. So I don't hate going for Protect here and actually switching into Bramble Gast immediately. Like, the idea is I'm applying so much pressure on turn 1 that I think you have to play defensively. The risk in protecting here is that they may just click Surging Strikes onto Tornadus instead, but I would expect Tornadus to be bulky enough to survive anyway. Unless they're, like, Choice Banded. Or they do that. Interesting play. Okay, that makes me think that like, you are not Specs Golden Go and you're protecting here. Tornadus is going to protect. I probably should have Tailwinded there. They're Surging Strikes, but into where? Okay, nice. Into Bramble Gas. Perfect. Yeah, I, I do think Tailwind may have been the better play for me there. Um, that really makes me think, if you're making that play, your Choice Scarf on the Urshifu. But this is one amazing reason to use Bramble Gas, right? We took less than 50% from their Surging Strikes, and they took 50% basically just from Rocky Helmet. Okay, maybe make it rain here. Ah, T-Bolt. Okay, makes sense. Honestly, if you're T-Bolt, you're going to be choice specs most of the time. So, I could Tailwind here, but I could also Sunny Day. Uh, 
I don't know how fast Golden Go is going to be here. But basically, Sunny Day would allow... Eh, they're probably going to Specs T-Bolt this slot, Surging Strikes this slot anyway, right? So I think it's fine to just Tailwind here. And go for the Knockout onto Urshifu. Nice, they switch. Beautiful. Further makes me think you are Specsed. They bring out Rillaboom, so Bramblegast is looking good right now, ladies and gentlemen. We even get the terrain. And the thing is, once I set up this Tailwind, like, I think my Chi Yu is just so well positioned for Heat Wave. So now we get Wind Rider. But I do miss Power Whip. Okay, it's a little bit less than desirable. I think we hit that Power Whip, we're just in such good shape, but that's just one of the inherent weaknesses of this team you are going to miss. So, yeah. Surging Strikes, two hits. Exactly enough. Okay. Uh, that is a shame because Rillaboom obviously now has Fake Out Pressure going into this next turn, right? And... Oh, but I guess the good thing is you, you just can't click Fake Out onto Bramblegast anyway, so... Yeah, I'll still just bring out Chiyu here. Now, the expectation then is for them to maybe click Aqua Jet. I think Water Terra here is fine with Chiyu. And just overheat into Rillaboom. And Power Whip into Urshifu. So the Ghost Typing here to avoid Fake Out is really nice. Water Terra here protects us against Aqua Jet. If you don't click Fake Out here, this should just be a double knockout. And then I can just overheat Shadow Sneak into Golden Go for another KO. And that would be three KOs in two turns. But the expectation is Fake Out here on a Chiyu. But they don't go for it. Nice. So that's Choice Specs Overheat onto Rillaboom, and that's a one-hit knockout. Excellent. So hopefully Bramblegast can connect on this Power Whip, then and it'll be the exact scenario I was describing, where then I just double up on Gold and go next turn. Nice. And folks, that's why you want to consider using Bramblegast in this format. Being able to wall Surging Strikes completely is really nice. And then being able to deal damage back with Rocky Helmet, also really nice. And Specs Chiyu just, like, does so much damage, right? Like, even against Assault Vest Rillaboom, you have the Specs boost, you have the Beads of Rune boost as well, and it just stacks up so quickly. So, I don't even know if we need the Shadow Sneak here, quite frankly, onto the Golden Go, but it's going to be Mimikyu, okay? Plus the Golden Go, which makes sense. Mimikyu, not that scary, but it could have Power Whip, I suppose. Uh, I think the main thing to worry about here is actually, like, a miss with Chiyu. I'm personally okay just clicking Overheat and Protect this turn. Because I think if you're my opponent, you probably just click Make It Rain anyway, right? So I want to Protect here just to make sure I don't lose off an Overheat miss. So Chiyu connects again. Brilliant. And that does still get the one-hit knockout. That's the strength of Choice Specs Chiyu, right? We one-shot potentially AV Rillaboom, one-shot Golden Go even at minus two. And that looked like Choice Specs to me, given the turn one Thunderbolt play. And they Trick Room, but that's fine, right? Like, Bramble Gas isn't half bad here. Um, and I can just pivot Chiyu out now. Yeah. Four turns of Trick Room. Last turn of Tailwind on my end. Can switch out into Flutter Main and just go for a Shadow Sneak here. Break that Disguise, and then it'll be a three on one. And I just don't see a world in which Mimikyu can come back from that. I think you could argue in staying in with Chiyu here as well, but I'd rather just reset the overheat because once I switch out and back in, a single overheat should just get the knockout onto Mimikyu because Shadow Sneak breaks the skies here. Uh, Flutter has a super effective Shadow Ball as well. So I think turn one could have been a little bit spooky because they could have launched Surging Strikes and Tornadoes, but that felt just so risky, right? When you have a Chiyu out on the field. But I do wonder if I should have just like sent it and clicked Tailwind immediately on turn one to be a little bit safer. Either way, Bramble Gas here, Shadow Sneak, Insulin Mimikyu, going to break the disguise. They are also Rocky Helmet, which is, I'd say, one of the more common items on Mimikyu right now. So, not shocked to see that. And they go for Play Rough, and we survive that, and they're going to eat up. Or well, I'm going to eat up an Attack Drop, they're going to eat up Rocky Helmet damage. But the Attack Drop is fine, right? It's like 3 on 1 at this point. Okay, Tailwind Peter's out. 
Yeah, I mean, if we wanted to play, like, super, super optimally, I'm actually curious if Power Whip would get the KO here, but let's, I'm also curious how much Shadow Sneak does. I was going to say, if we wanted to play super, super optimally, it's technically cor correct to just keep protecting. Oh my gosh, that almost actually just got the KO, but that was a crit. That explains why. I suppose that makes up for the uh, attack drop, though, and they play rough into Flutter main, but we survived that. Cool. And Shadow Ball delivers the finishing blow. Like... If I were to protect right with both Mons, then it stalls out another turn of Trick Room, but the reality is that like Mimikyu just doesn't really have good spread attacks, so like we're able to clear them anyway. But yeah, I think this was a really good game to feature Bramble Gas generally, right? Being able to switch in on that turn one play alone was a really big deal. And we even missed Power Whip, right? If I had connected on that Power Whip, we'd be in even better shape. But I think this game highlighted both the strength of Bramble Gas as a defensive option and an offensive option with that Power Whip and the Shadow Sneak, like unique Ghost and Grass coverage. And then Shiyu being able to just blow things up with Choice Specs Overheat, right? Being able to one-shot Rillaboom in this format is no joke. Rillaboom is one of the tankiest Pokemon, and even though it no longer gets Grassy Glide or High Horsepower, which it did in Sword and Shield, this Pokemon is still incredible and is easily, I would say, one of the top 10, 15 Pokemon, maybe even higher in this format. So having a way to one-shot it if they can't Terra is really, really nice. Okay, Dragonite, Champau, Urshifu, Landorus, Heatran, Rillaboom. Feels like a Gyarados game to me. Right? Like, they don't have electric types. Their team is very physical. I think if I'm not bringing Gyarados into this matchup, it's like, when would I bring it, right? Now, I'd say the main thing to worry about is probably inner focus on Dragonite. Inner focus, normal Terra, E speed into, say, my Gyarados certainly hurts a ton. Um, that is pretty concerning, actually. Now, I could leave Flutter Main, which gets the booster boost immediately. We have Ghost Terror on Tornadus to get around E-Speed potentially as well. But Chiyu is not Ghost. I think I bring Bramble Gas, actually, specifically because of the Chiampao Dragonite combo. So, I'm down to lead Flutter plus Gyarados. And then Bramble Gas as a potential switch in. And then for the last Pokemon, um... I don't think I want Torn in the back, so it's between Hands and Chiyu. They have very few special attackers. I think I like Chiyu a little bit more here, especially with Water Terra, because with Water Terra, I can Terra Water Terra Blast into Heatran, for example. Although, truthfully, if I were my opponent, I would never bring Heatran in this matchup, now that I think about it. You're walled by Gyarados, you're walled by... Well, you're not walled by Chiyu, but Bramble Gas also gets boosts with Wind Rider. So, yeah. Let's see. Mainly curious what lead they opt for. That is going to be Heatran Urshifu. Okay, so they brought Heatran. That's really good for Bramblegast. Especially because you are Water Urshifu. Oh, this is actually a dream come true right now. Um, so, there, there are actually a couple things I could do here. Um... Because I have this booster energy, I could, like, just Icy win. It sucks to give up booster, but I honestly think Bramble Gas is such a safe switch in here, and I think Dragon Dance is also so safe. And the reason for this is because Bramble Gas has Wind Rider and Rocky Helmet, right? So, like, if you Surging Strikes into that slot, okay, amazing. You just do a ton of damage to yourself, and if you Heat Wave, you also give me an attack boost. They detect, which is fine. Free Dragon Dance now for Gyarados. Cool. It's so funny that I can switch into Bramble Gas and like completely wall these two Pokemon. Yeah, they go for Flash Cannon. That is, I'm actually not going to be able to wall that. So <laughs> perhaps spoke a little too soon, but that's okay. Um, I'm fine by that because I think what I can do now is just. Uh, ooh, I could consider Strength Sap, right? Yeah, that's interesting. It's mainly a question of how fast their Heatran is relative to us. A Strength Zap here would actually be incredibly powerful. The thing is, it's like, I could Strength Zap, are you Mystic Water or Focus Sash? Because if you're Sash, no, Sash should be on Champau, actually. That also felt like Specs damage from Heatran, I'm not 100% sure, though. You know, I honestly kind of like Protect here and then Water, oops, Waterfall into Heatran. 
Okay, Urshifu switches. Into Landers for an Intimidate. Yep, that makes sense. But, like, the reality is, like, Gyarados is still pretty well positioned, I would argue, right? That was a really nice turn one by my opponent, by the way. Um, but I'm fine with this. I'm fine with this. I think Gyarados having a speed boost in itself and being at neutral is still a really big deal. But they're not Specs Heatran either. Okay, so that was an opportunity to maybe go for another Dragon Dance. Uh, I think my opponents played really well given the, what I would argue, like, slightly suboptimal matchup. Uh, I will go for Strength Sap here. And I actually think it's an opportunity to Dragon Dance again right now. They've made me look a little silly so far with the Protects. Like, really, really good Protects. Um, I think that last turn, yeah, if I had went for the Strength... I could have gone Strength Sap into Urshifu Dragon Dance again. That would have been really sick, but... A little risky, in my opinion. I would love to see, like, uh, baiting out a Heatran Terra here. But that's the other thing, right? Like... Uh, a lot of Heatrans right now carry Heat Wave, Earth Power, Sub Protect, or Terror Blast, and so that's why I figured Bramble Gas would be able to switch in pretty safely, but they actually did have Flash Cannon, which did, as you saw, really meaningful damage. So that's how a single move can like move the needle in a matchup, right? But Heatran actually pivots out. Okay, fine by me. Into Urshifu. I wonder if they're just U-turning here. But we're going to Dragon Dance again. So Gyarados is super fast now. If they just rock sign and I get the strength sap off, I'm in such good shape, by the way. Oh, I'm just faster. You're not Scarf. Okay. Oh, that's huge. Because <laughs> I heal all the way back up now. Let's go, Bramblegast. Sick. Okay, they go for Rock Tomb. That's a nice play. But that's fine by me. Um, I'm at plus one attack and speed. Waterfall into this is really safe. I honestly think this detects again. So right now I'm down a Power Whip into Landorus and Waterfall into it. We need to start dealing damage. Um, given that Bramble Gas is faster, I'm thinking you are Assault Vest, Lando. They've had a lot of tricks so far, though. Like the Tech Flash Cannon, the Tech Rock Tomb, both of those make things a little bit more challenging for us. But the upside is right now we wall Urshifu really well with both Gyarados and Bramble Gas. I just want to start dealing damage, right? And they don't protect either Pokemon, so here's a plus one Waterfall. And that's just a one-hit KO on a Gar uh, Landris. Let's see if they're Rocky Helmet. Okay, and they just search Surging Strikes Gyarados. Perfect. We've got Citrus, so we heal up. If we don't miss the Power Whip, that is going to be a ton of damage on Urshifu as well, which is incredible. I think the main thing to consider is that Heatran actually still is a problem for me in the long run, but I can Water Terra Terra Blast with Chiyu against that. Okay, does Power Whip connect here? Beautiful. That's still so much damage, even after Intimidate. Excellent. Yeah, the fact we... Like, this is why you use Strength Sap. I think Strength Sap is not the easiest move to use, but a single one, being able to heal all the way back to full is so nice for this team. They actually bring out Dragonite. Okay. So Dragonite's interesting because you now can go for that extreme speed, right? For example, you get extreme speed and surging strikes into Gyarados, which would cover for me switching out. Mm, we know Heatran's in the back. I really would like to prioritize getting a knockout right now, but not at the expense, I think, of switching out if i were my opponent i would e speed and surging strikes gyarados right now so i think i want to just power whip here you know i'm actually down to protect because i'm not sure surging strikes even gets the ko onto me but they're gonna make the switch which makes sense okay this also could be flying terra dragonite and then they terra and then terra blast into bramble gas which would be kind of awkward but so far no terra we protect they do e speed into us okay And Power Whip is going to do negative damage here. You know, that was a crit, right? Yeah, I was like, there's no way we do that much damage to something that resists it that well. <laughs> um, okay, so you can E-Speed. Like I said, I would E-Speed Flash Cannon Gyarados right now. Yeah, this is still pretty hard to... Because, like, they can kind of a target around Bramble Gas right now is what makes this tricky, right? 
I think we might want to leverage this Water Terra Terra Blast to catch my opponent off guard, but... I would expect this to be normal Terra. Um, so I'll tell you what, I'm going to Strength Sap into Dragonite right now. And... I could switch this out. I actually think switching isn't the worst decision there. And I also think going for a Strength Sap and Protect last turn also wasn't the worst decision. We're faster than Heatran. Okay, that's actually really good to confirm as well. So now you're at minus one attack. Oh, thanks for the Heat Wave. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay. I don't think the damage on this really matters that much at this point, but I'll gladly take it. Uh, I think I actually want to bring out... Okay, so we know they have Urshifu in the back. Basically, like, I need to clear Heatran. So the easiest way to do that is to probably just bring out Chiyu, Water Terra, Terra Blast. But the thing is, you could just protect Heatran, Extreme Speed, the Chiyu twice, which is concerning. And then they could still Terra with their Heatran as well. So I don't think we're clear at all. Like, Gyarados was the best answer into Heatran, and now we don't have it. Okay, I'm going to bring out Fluttermane. So we're at neutral across the board. Could see Dragonite switch out here. I could see them terroring as well defensively. Um, personally, don't hate a Power Whip here, which would cover for them switching out into Urshifu. And also break center focus. They E-speed into Flutter. Oh, can't... Covering for Terra. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. And then Flash Cannon. Okay, that works. Uh, so I'm not going to Terra specifically for that reason then. I am going to... We might as well start chipping down Heatran, right? Although I want to get a Knockout on a Dragonite. And I don't even know if Moonblast plus Shadow Sneak gets it here. Yeah, I'll Power Whip again, and Moonblast. They are going to get the Terra out. Okay, but who's Terra? Dragonite? That's huge. And the reason why that's huge is because now it means I can Terra with my um, Chi Yu into Heatran and just knock it out with Water Terra, Terra Blast. Yeah, so they were trying to get fancy there. I think they were reading me into going for a Fairy Terra there, but I figured they were Choice Banded, so I was like, well, you're locked into E-Speed right now. Why would I bother doing that? So Bramble Gist gets Power Whip off, and that's a KO. Oof, beautiful. Another reason to actually not click Shadow Sneak is the normal Terra as well, right? Because then they would have just taken no damage. So now I'm feeling really good with this Water Chiyu waiting in the back. They're going to Flash Cannon into us. And we survive. Cool. Okay. They bring Urshifu out. Man, the camera angles have been kind of weird today, I feel like. No reason to tariff this. It only makes us weaker to Urshifu. Uh, we're definitely saving our Terra for Chiyu at this point. Power Whip into you, and I think just Shadow Ball into you is fine. Okay, they do detect Chi uh, Urshifu. That, that, they, they have to do that. I think without doing that, I just win the game. Oh, you know what the correct play for me there was? It was actually Protect Fluttermane and Power Whip, but Shadow Ball also just does so much damage there. It's Citrus on Heatran. Okay. Yeah, the play was to Protect Flutter and Power Whip there because then I can just Moonblast um, Power Whip Urshifu and then Water Terra Chiyu wins the game, but they actually end up clicking Flash Cannon. Okay. Uh, gets a special defense draw, but it's fine. Um, Because I'm faster, so I'll, the, the scary thing here is I could miss with Power Whip right now. Yeah, that actually is kind of spooky. But we just double up on Urshifu now. Yep, so the Aqua Jet. Wait, I guess Protect Power Whip wouldn't have one. No, never mind, because they, they would have just Aqua Jet me the next turn anyway. But we hit Power Whip. Okay, nice. Uh, I have anxiety using this team in general just because you do have a lot of somewhat low accuracy moves, but fortunately we're able to connect there. 
Um, this Flash Cannon basically made a huge difference, though. If they were kind of the more standard set right now, which is like Heat Wave, Earth Power, um, and either like Sub Terra Blast and then Protect, I think we would have just completely walled Heatran with Ramble Ghast. But this was the win con I was going for this entire game. So this is exactly why I wanted to bring to you. Iron Hands also would have worked here, honestly. Tornadus definitely would have been an, uh, a game losing fourth Mon, though. So now we Terra and then just Water Terra Blast. Uh, Heatran defensively is just one of the best Pokemon in this format. So yeah. But we were able to conserve this all the way through, and now we just get the win. Yeah, sorry, the play I was thinking, I said Protect and Power Whip, but if I had gone for that, they would have just gotten Flash Cannon off into me, and then the next, it's the same situation next turn, you just Aqua Jet into me. So, Heatran Protects, that's fine. I'm just going to be able to get a knockout here. I think to my opponent's credit, they eliminated Gyarados in an effective manner. Um, I think Gyarados had the potential to sweep my opponent's entire team, and they did, a, they did a really good job of recognizing how important Heatran was in this matchup. And so by conserving the Heatran all the way until they could knock out Gyarados, I think that was really, really smart of them. The way they had staggered enough damage onto us. But we had a lot of tools to work with ultimately as well. And I think the main thing in this game was this would have looked pretty different if they had conserved their Terra with the Heatran instead. But the normal Terra on Dragonite was basically a complete gamble on their end. And to their credit, if I had gone for Fairy Terra on Fluttermane, that would have worked out. But I had such little reason to go for Fairy Terra, especially after seeing them already lock into Extreme Speed the previous turn. And that's how you can sometimes take advantage of your opponent being locked into choice items, for example. So, yeah. Okay, we've got Solo Dondozo here. It's interesting because I feel like when I see Solo Dozo, I always expect Ting Lu after playing Regulation C, the previous format, but Ting Lu has really fallen off in this format. It's also interesting to see Dragonite without Chi and Pao. Otherwise, you've got Rillaboom, Cresselia, Chiyu, and Flutter. How good is Bramblegast here? I mean, it's immune to Fake Out. I can Shadow Sneak into Flutter, or I can Tailwind Power Whip, for example. We don't have Taunt. And Chiyu here does have Specs Heat Wave. Like, Trick Room from Cresselia is pretty scary, but I think we can leverage our Iron Hands under Trick Room, potentially. There are more Inner Focus Dragonites these days, so I'm questioning the value of Gyarados. Like, if it's Inner Focus Dragonite and Oblivious Dondozo, that would be kind of annoying. Hmm... Flutter would allow me to go with the faster mode, i.e. Flutter Chi Yu. Could do that. Honestly, though, like, Bleak One Storm from Tornadus is pretty good here. I'm down for a Tornadus Bramblegast lead, and in the back, Chi Yu plus Iron Hands. Uh, the idea behind this is that I think Bramblegast can just deal pretty consistent damage with Power Whip in the beginning of this game. I think the main thing we're going to want to watch out for from their end is probably a Chi Yu. If they lead Chi Yu, for example, we could go for, say, Protect Tornadus and then swap in either my Chi Yu or Iron Hands. So that's going to be Fluttermane and Dondozo. Okay. So I think Bramble Gas right now is really well positioned. No booster energy. This could be Trick Room. Yawn from Dozo makes sense. So, I think one play that's pretty safe to make is just Tailwind and then Power Whip on turn one. Question is whether or not I want to commit a Terra. I think Double Protecting is also fine. And I think the third option to consider is actually just Bleak Wind Storm here and Protect. But I'm okay with Double Protect. Like, the only thing that really scares me with this is that they end up actually having Trick Room with Fluttermane. But even if they do, then I don't have to necessarily click Tailwind with Tornadus. And I can pivot in my Iron Hands to take advantage of their Trick Room. So we'll Double Protect. Okay, they just go for Shadow Ball. Yep. And Yawn. Okay, so they doubled up into Bramblegast. I think what we can do here is just Tailwind. I don't necessarily even need to Tailwind. But like, Tailwind into Power Whip here is pretty good. 
Because, like, you're not actually dealing damage with Dozo, and this way I don't have to commit a Terra, so I'm down for that. The only thing is, like, because they didn't protect, I wonder if it's actually Focus Ash on Flutter main. I think that's actually pretty likely here, not gonna lie. So maybe I actually want to go for Tailwind here, Terra, defensively, and then Power Whip into Don Dozo. Because that's a pretty huge wall into the Chi that I have in the back. And they switch out Flutter, okay, that works for me. That's Chi Yu. Okay. We'll see if they Terra their Dondozo. But the thing is... Oh, it's actually going to be a double switch. Okay. Maybe Rillaboom? Yeah. So, basically, like, Tornadus right now is pretty well positioned. Uh, Bramble Guess is going to be incredible into the Flutter main plus the Dondozo in the back. I was really hoping to bait out a Protector a Terror on turn one. Because I could have just gone for Tailwind Power Whip, right? So, the Steel Terra here doesn't really protect us against Chiyu. does protect us against Flutter Main, though. And we're still going to deal decent damage here with Power Whip, I would think, right? It's Grassy Terrain boosted, and we get the attack boost from Windrider. Okay, here's Power Whip. Yeah, not bad. I wonder how much Chiyu would have taken from that. Um, I mean, I think double protecting here is fine, but I think I could also protect and say pivot out into Iron Hands. The thing is, Hands likely will be slower than Chiyu, maybe Rillaboom as well. Like, Fake Out plus Heat Wave right now is pretty safe for my opponent, so... I think Protect and Switch into Chiyu's is also acceptable. You just might not actually click Fake Out. I think Hands is more important for me to conserve uh, in the long run, though. And, and the reason for that is because Hands is really good into Dondozo with Wild Charge, and it can also just Heavy Slam into Flutter Main. So being able to tank most of the attacks from my opponent's team, I think that makes it really valuable. If I had Gyarados, I actually think it would be the perfect time to like switch that in and then start Dragon Dancing, but we didn't bring it in this battle. So that was a nice double switch by my opponent to cover for pretty much all of the offensive options from Bramblegast. Okay, they actually go for Overheat here into Chiyu. No Fake Out from the Rillaboom, so nicely done there. But it's a U-turn into Tornadus. Okay, that works for me. Um, they're actually stuck in a really tough spot right now, I would say, because I get to go for... Oh, we could do a bunch of things here. For example, I could just Sunny Day into Heat Wave. I think, like, Rillaboom going for a Terra here feels fairly likely. I could also just Bleak Wind Storm, honestly. Which I also think isn't bad, because if I were my opponent, I would pivot this out into the Dondozo and maybe Fire Terra this. Hmm. And then go for like a Stomping onto Chi Yu, maybe. I'm definitely down to Bleak Wind, and I think Bleak Wind Heat Wave here is fine. It covers for switches. It kind of forces them to Terra this turn. And the thing is, if you don't commit your Terra here, I just do a ton of damage, right? Okay, so Rillaboom hard switches, which makes me think you'd be bringing out Dondozo in that slot, which makes sense. Yep. But this is the thing, like, Bleak Wind now is just going to do pretty consistent damage across the board. Heat Wave does miss on the Dondozo, which is a little unfortunate. But Bleak Wind here is going to connect onto both, and yeah, that's really significant damage, honestly. Speed drop on Dozo. They're going to go for an overheat. To which we survive. Cool. Okay, not bad. We're just healing back up a little bit as well, which is nice. The Dozo is going to be a little bit annoying to take care of, especially because of Yawn, but that's okay. I think here I'm actually down to go for a sunny day into a heat wave. Mm, I might want to consider protecting here. I mean, like, I, I basically want to get Tailwind up again for Bramblegast. If we eliminate Chi, we should be in great shape. You know what? Yeah, I'm down for Sunny Day plus Heat Wave here. Like, my main hesitance is whether or not this actually gets the knockout onto Chi Yu. But setting up the Sun is really valuable for my Chi to deal more damage. It also reduces Wave Crash damage from the Dundozo, so then I'm not sure they can KO my Chi and they might click a Yawn into that slot as well. Bramble Gas right now, still decently positioned. Like, the Steel Terra didn't really help out in the early game, but it's still valuable against Flutter later on. 
And then Iron Hands matches up pretty well as well. So Chiyu pivots out, but I assume it's Flutter coming out. Yeah, I mean, like, now that's taking a Sunny Day boosted Heat Wave, right? So Specs Chiyu is incredibly well positioned right now. We do activate Protosynthesis, though. But it's a special attack boost. Okay, that's great to see. So here's Specs Heat Wave. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and we burned on Dozo. <laughs> yeah, I think that's game over. I'd be shocked if they come back after that. But I don't know. I, I really think even without the burn, we were in totally good shape. And yeah, they went for Wave Crash, right? So it's like with the Sun, 76 to 55, that did 21 damage. If I weren't... If I didn't get that burn, I still would have survived that comfortably. And that was the whole idea behind setting up the Sun, right? But yeah, I think... The main thing in this game was just that, like, I feel like I have a lot more damage, and their Dondozo is pretty passive. So, being able to switch in Chiyu that turn put us in a really good spot, right? Like, Specs Chiyu does ridiculous amounts of damage. So, Tailwind Peter's out. You can bring out Rillaboom, or you can bring your Chiyu back out. If you bring your Chiyu back out, though, I can just click Tailwind and Heat Wave again. If you bring Rillaboom out, then I can just go for... I can probably pivot out to you, um, or I can just click Bleak Wind Heat Wave. The question is whether or not I want to risk the potential accuracy. Because I think setting up Tailwind is pretty safe to enable Bramble Gast. Last turn of Grassy Terrain here. I've still got Iron Hands. Uh, your best bet... They still have Interred, so I think a Terra Rillaboom here makes plenty of sense. Honestly, here I'm down to just go for Tailwind and go for Heat Wave. Okay, fake out into Chiyu, makes sense. We get Tailwind up. Probably a Yawn or Wave Crash here. I don't even, I mean, with the burn, Wave Crash is definitely not KOing, but question if it would have even knocked out without the burn, thanks to the um, sun being up. Okay, so we continue to heal back. The Grassy Terrain recovery has actually been really nice for Chiyu, by the way. It's been appreciated. And the good thing is, it's like, Dondozo can yawn all it wants, but Bramble Gas is kind of just like a definitive win con against it, right? So, I think here now, I am happy to just go for a Bleak Wind, and then pivot back out into Bramble Gast. Bramble Gas honestly walls both Rillaboom and Dundozo really hard here, and with Rocky Helmet, they would also take damage should they hit us. So it's like, Chiyu is kind of my opponent's only win condition at this point. The one scary thing is most of our moves can actually miss, right? Bleak Wind is not 100% accurate, Heat Wave isn't 100% accurate, Overheat isn't, um, Power Whip isn't, it's really only that Shadow Sneak. But one more attack on Chiyu, and we should get the knockout onto it on their end. So feeling good about this positioning. I think the fact that, like, my Chi was able to just get that one Sunny Day Heat Wave off, that one turn to KO Fluttermane and deal so much damage to Dozo and burn it was kind of the game-defining turn, I would argue. And I think them not bringing Cresselia made things easier, but I think we also could have taken advantage of a Cresselia from their end because it's pretty passive, and like Chi and Bramble Gas, I think, can kind of walk over it. So I think Rillaboom kind of has to Terra this turn, in my opinion, but let's see. Either way, we get the Bramble Gas back out. Here's the Terra, and if you Terra Rillaboom, then I can obviously just Power Whip into your Dondozo slot, which is also great. So, yep, I would expect Fire Terra here, maybe Water. Yep, exactly. So, I don't have super effective damage into it anymore. It actually resists a lot of my attacks, but that's fine, because you're also not dealing that much damage to me. So, Bleak Wind connects. Really solid damage there. I honestly probably could have stayed in with Chiyu, um, but they actually end up clicking U-turn here. Great, so you up Rocky Helmet damage. Excellent. And that pivots out. And that means that Chiyu now obviously cannot go for a Terra. And that's a pretty big deal in itself as well. Okay. And they go for another Yawn, this time onto Tornadus. Makes sense. I think basically here, I can just go for Bleak Wind. Like, I think Tornadus has really done its job, and I don't think a Rillaboom plus this Burnt Dondozo is really going to be able to win my opponent in the game. Uh, especially with Rocky Helmet here, right? So we still have two turns of Tailwind. I think here, I could see Chiyu protecting. I don't want to risk missing Bleak Wind slash Power Whip. Um... So I think here I'm actually happy to click Bleak Wind and protect with the Bramble Gas. The idea here is Chiyu might just end up attacking. They actually switch out, okay. So I'm just continuously getting free 
Bleak wins off, right? And that was one of the reasons why I valued bringing Tornadus into this matchup. It felt like they just didn't have too much to handle Bleak Wind. And obviously, Bleak Wind isn't the most consistent because of its accuracy, but we don't need to hit every single one, right? There's the Protect. Okay, Chiyu doesn't Protect. And Bleak Wind just gets the double knockout. <laughs> nice. So that's a double KO. Dondozo's their last one, and we just Power Whip to KO that. So, yeah, I think my opponent not really having great speed control made this game a lot easier for me. I think Bramble Gas applied a lot of early pressure, forcing them to make the switches, and then by making those switches, we were able to then position Chiyu in the perfect spot. Now, I didn't bring out Iron Hands in this battle, but I thought it was still a really good pick because it was valuable into Flutter Main, right? Uh, we could Heavy Slam into it, and it's valuable into Dondozo as well. So, fall asleep now, but we can just pivot out into Hands and go for Power Whip. Okay, so Chiyu was definitely the carry of this game. Tornadus put on a ton of value, though, and Bramble Gas applied a lot of early game pressure. I think my my main thing is on turn when I felt like I could have just sent it with Bramble Gas, but, like, you know, I didn't want to, like, go for a Terra and then have them just double switch immediately, so they did end up getting the better end of the trade-off anyway because they did make that double switch, but Power Whip did pretty meaningful damage into Rillaboom, and it kind of spooked them, right? They ended up launching that overheat into the Bramble Gas, and so... Basically, with Chiyu getting perfectly positioned, uh, it's, it's seeing Overkeep plus U-Turn made me feel like I was in a really, really good spot. I think they may have wanted to consider staying in with the Rillaboom and going for a Fire Terra that turn immediately, rather than making that hard switch like they did, um, because I think that made the match easier for me. But yeah, the reality is that like we just pretty consistently outpaced them, and they were never able to get good damage onto our side of the field. Okay, we've got Fluttermane, Chiyu, Thunderous, Amoongus, Iron Hands, and Urshifu. Hmm. So, kind of like the previous game, I mean, Bramble Gas doesn't love going up against Chiyu specifically. Uh, Gyarados is an interesting pick here, but Flying Terra means we're still weak to the electric type attack, so maybe it's not actually really that good. I think Thunder Wave in general from Thunderous concerns me. Iron Hands is probably a pretty good bring for me, generally. What's stopping me from leading Chiyu? I mean, it's not a bad bring, right? It's immune to Thunderous' Prankster attacks. Torn is interesting here because the dual electrics make it a little bit more difficult for it. And I think Bramble Gas is actually really good if we eliminate the Chiyu from their end. So that's food for thought as well. I don't completely hate Torn plus Chiyu. Bramble Gas in the back. Uh, maybe Hands is the fourth. Like, being able to potentially one-shot Flutter and Chiyu is pretty valuable. I don't love my Flutter here. Gyarados is interesting. It really is. But I'm going to bring Hands. I think the dual electrics on there and spooks me out a decent amount. So, yeah. But um, I think Bramble Gas can be really interesting here as, like, a counter into their Urshifu. If it's Water Urshifu. Um, I mean, if it's Stark, it still can... No, well, I guess it's a little trickier, right? Because you hit us for super effective. If I Terra, you can close combat us for super effective. But it's Chiyu and Hands to start, okay? Um, I mean, with this, I'm definitely happy to just double protect turn one. Okay, so we're faster with Chiyu. That's also good to know. Ooh, I could also protect Pivot in my Chiyu. I kind of like that play a little bit more, I think. Because the problem is, like, Tornadus isn't going to really do that much for me, given that I'm already faster than both anyway. I think the one play would really enable me is probably Tailwind Specs Overheat. Or, sorry, Sunny Day Specs Overheat into Hands. Which admittedly isn't terrible. Hmm. Okay, I'm actually thinking about that a decent amount. Uh, oh, wait. We're Specs. We can't protect. Okay, wait. I'm going to protect Overheat here. Um, yeah, this is interesting. Like, who do you fake out, right? They might just Drain Punch my Chiyu as well. Oh, it's Detect Hands. Okay. Uh, if this is Nasty Plot Chiyu, this game is going to get ugly really quickly. Okay, it's Snarl. Could be worse. Hmm... So 
So you're not Assault Vested on hands, which makes me wonder if Sunny Day plus Overheat here is enough to get the KO. Yeah, this is a really nice lead by them. I think they definitely outled me in this game. I wonder if I needed to bring like more consistent answers into their Chiyu, but... Yeah, I'm kind of down to go for Sunny Day and Overheat. If we can nuke Iron Hands, that would be incredible, but... They're going to go for a Terra as well, which I would expect to be a defensive Terra on hands. Yeah, nicely done. Okay. So they played turn one to turn two perfectly. I think Detect in itself is already not that common on hands since so many people like to run Assault Vest. But this is likely going to be a very tough turn one to turn two for me. I would expect this to do like 40-ish. A little bit more, actually. You can see, if they did not Terra, we actually would have gotten the knockout. So my assumption there was correct. But, yep, it is Citrus Berry Iron Hands. Okay. The upside is this means you can't Terra your Chiyu. They continue to Snarl, so I'm only going to lose one Pokemon here, at least. That also makes me think Chiyu has the Assault Vest. But they're going to Drain Punch into my Chiyu. Yeah. So this is where Gyarados would have been amazing, right? I could have pivoted my Chiyu into Gyarados, get an Intimidate off, and maybe start Dragon Dancing, and then just sweep with that. So if I were to, you know, play this game again, I think that's something I would heavily consider. But I'm going to bring out Iron Hands now. Given that Chiyu's been clicking Snarl, it's either Specs or Assault Vest normally. Um, yeah, so with that, for example... Protect and Drain Punch here is generally safe, but they might switch Chiyu out into Flutter, Amoongus. I mean, I'm at minus two, or sorry, minus one. Okay. Then I'm going to click Bleak Wind anyway, and Drain Punch. Ideally, they stay in with Chiyu. Oh, they do. Okay, that's huge. I do miss Bleak Wind on hands, but meh. If I just eliminate Chiyu, I think that's great. Okay, so they their flamethrower. Yep, does a ton. Ah, oh, it's Swords Dance detects Citrus Berry hands. Oh, goal. Okay. Um, that is definitely spooky. However, if you're Wild Charge Drain Punch, Bramble Gas actually walls you decently well. So. Bramble Gas is actually going to be critical in beating this right now. My problem is I have very few answers to reliably deal with Fire Terra Hands. Uh, Gyarados is actually the only Pokemon on this team that I'd say has good coverage into that. Which is a little scary. So they bring out Thunderous. I am going to click Tailwind now. I would expect them to go for a Drain Punch onto Hands. So I'm going to switch Hands out now into Bramble Gas. The problem here is, I think if we had Phantom Force with Bramble Gas, we'd be in better shape, because I just don't have that much damage with it, right? And Tornadus isn't really doing too much for me either. So we'll set up Tailwind, which now enables Bramble Ghast. Okay. They go for Wild Bolt Storm, which actually is going to activate Wind Rider, so we are stacking up fairly quickly, actually. And I would assume... Just a Drain Punch here. If that's the case, things are going to get interesting. Okay. The problem for me is my Iron Hands kind of has limited lifespan, right? The upside is we've set up Tailwind and I'm at plus two attack. So this is where if I had Phantom Force, man, that would be sick. I have Terra available. I think here it's likely Hands Protects. The question is, should I call it? Because I kind of want to just go for Fake Out. I just wonder how much plus two Shadow Sneak even does, honestly. I think if we can clear like this, we can win. Um, the other thing I'm debating is, yeah, just like aggressively targeting down Thunderous right now. Okay, I'm down for that. I, I think a Protect here from... Hands feel somewhat likely. So I'm going to fake out Shadow Sneak Thunderous. Nice. Okay, good. Hopefully they're not Covert Cloak. Pretty good damage from fake out. Plus two Shadow Sneak. That's really good damage as well. 
They actually are Covert Cloak. Okay. A little unfortunate, but that's okay. Here's the thing. Um... So you've gotten the speed drop onto me. I haven't terrored yet, but I don't really want to steal Terra in front of hands. I can Drain Punch and Shadow Sneak you, but you're just going to heal back from that. But I guess you, if you click Scary Face into this, then that benefits me. And they might actually click Scary Face into me. They might Scary Face this again. Because I'm thinking of clicking... Wild Charge and actually Strength Sap. Okay, they do Scary Face into hands. Yep. I would expect Drain Punch on that slot as well. Which is why I wanted to go for Strength Sap here. Decrease their damage output a little bit. Yep. 169 down to 60. That's still a ton of damage. Yeah, honestly, like, I think Fire, Terra, Swords Dance, Citrus, Hands legitimately counters this entire team. There's no consistent answer for it. Because imagine if I bring Gyarados, I can intimidate you, but you boost up uh, quicker than I do. And Gyarados' Terra is flying, so you still hit me for a super effective um, hit. Oh, Amoongus is their last one. Boy, this is interesting. I think I probably end up losing this because of the recovery from this, but I don't know. It's honestly going to be really interesting. Last turn of Tailwind. You should just Drain Punch this again. I mean, do I ever click Steel Terra here? I really don't think so. Drain Punch... I think I might as well just Grass Terror here, because I don't see a world in which I'm not tearing here. Yeah, I... I'm going to just slowly start targeting down Amoongus. The reason I'm targeting down Amoongus here is because of Pollen Puff. Like, if they have Pollen Puff, then they're just going to be able to consistently heal up hands. But, yeah. Honestly, I think, like... This is us just running into a set that counters our entire team. There is no reliable answer into Fire Terra uh, hands other than Gyarados. They did detect with hands. Okay, that gives us a shot, I would say. Uh, we just do such little damage, though. Yeah, and with Rocky Helmet. Mm, I can, like, slowly chip away on their end. I guess a heavy slam into Amoongus there would have been nice. Yeah, but they also have Pollen Puff, so... Yeah, I think if we had Phantom Force here, maybe we had a shot, because, like, it would do pretty significant damage, but I think it was always going to be pretty tough anyway. Yeah, like, we just aren't even doing that much, even at plus two, so it's just a really hard set, yeah. Gyarados would be the adjustment I would make in a best of three, but honestly, Gyarados... I, I think we just have a really bad matchup in this. Because um, it, it still loses pretty comfortably to the electric types, thanks to us having Flying Terra. So, that's how sometimes the single set can give teams a lot of trouble, right? And you're not going to have perfect coverage into every Pokemon or team in the format. Um, I'm just trying to think how I can potentially still come back. I guess if for some reason they, like, Wild Charge into Bramblegast here, and then, like, I double up KO Hands, we could actually have a shot. But yeah, the, the plus two sneaks are still just really doing nothing. Oh, they did Swords Dance, though. Okay. <laughs> I would say that actually gives me a slight window of opportunity. If I survive this. But okay, we don't. Yeah. Like, Amoongus having Pollen Puff and being able to actually deal meaningful damage here is such a problem as well. So the adjustment would be Gyarados. Even with Gyarados, I still think it's really hard. But without Gyarados, I think it's literally impossible. Like, I just don't think I had anything that I could have done uh, throughout this game. You know, I try to make plays. I could keep myself in it, but um, my opponent, like, recognizing to go for that Fire Terra on turn two is actually what completely is a needle mover, right? If they had not gone for that Detect, then Overheat would have just gotten that knockout, and this game would look completely different because their team is basically centered entirely around Iron Hands, I would say. Chiyu obviously can do a little bit of work as well, um, as you saw, but yeah. So, if I were to play this again, I think what went wrong, right? Like, they definitely just outled me from the start. Bramblegast was cool, but the problem for it is that it doesn't do enough damage because they're Fire Terra, right? 
And I brought it to try to like wall these physical attackers, but in the end, when you can boost up and you have a super effective Pollen Puff from Moongus, that's a problem. So if I were to replay this, I would play a fully Gyarados-centric game. So I think what I would do is actually lead Iron Hands plus Gyarados into their Chi Yu plus Iron Hands. Fake, uh, turn one, go for a fake out onto their Iron Hands and Dragon Dance with Gyarados. Uh, turn two, for example, consider protecting Gyarados and then going for a Drain Punch with Iron Hands, for example. You could also consider pivoting out Iron Hands. Um, but yeah, basically, like you could see how much of a problem Fire Terror Iron Hands was, right? Because we just have no way to really deal damage to it consistently. And part of this team aims to just like burst down your opponent, especially with this choice specs to you. But Fire Terra Hands is basically the best counter my opponent could have into Chiyu because Chiyu, of course, is just going to get wrecked by a Drain Punch. But if I tear into water, then you can wild charge me as well. So we ran into one of the biggest counters of this, this team, and you can see that uh, my opponent just executed it super well as well. Anyway, that's going to be it for this one, so thank you so much as always for joining me. I feel like this episode really showcased the strength of the Choice Specs Chiyu, especially when paired with Sun Support from Tornadus, as well as Bramble Ghast. I wish I could have shown off the Dragon Dance Gyarados a little bit more, because it can do massive amounts of damage. We had that one really good game featuring it, but I feel like Gyarados could have done even more work, and my opponent did a great job of kind of slowing down its damage output, especially with the combination of Intimidate and Rock Tomb from the Landris in that one. And then Fluttermane, I wish I could have showcased the Icy Wind combo with Chiyu a little bit more, but ultimately, this team is really powerful. Once again, built by 2017 world champion Ryota Otsubo, and so thanks so much as always for joining me. If you enjoyed, would really appreciate it if you consider leaving a like or subscribing to the channel, and I'll see you all next time. All right, peace.